And uh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone, and appreciate the time uh, that you're spending with us today. Uh, so some of you might be new to this webinar series. Some of you have may seen this webinar series in the past, um, but welcome back if you have. Um, but I'm gonna take you all through kind of a short presentation um, that I have created along with a quick demonstration of our Starship solution. Uh, as many of you may know, you've all been receiving the end of life um, emails from us regarding our ship gear platform uh, that is soon approaching here on December 31st. Uh, so hopefully um, after you see this and you can speak with us a little further, uh, you'll make a decision to kind of move on to Starship uh, and get onto that platform as soon as possible before ship gear is no longer supported. So with that being said, I'm gonna kind of spend um, like I said, a few minutes here on a presentation I put together. Um, but again, just uh, as you know, I mean, not gonna spend much time here. Uh, v Technologies, right? We've been around since 1987, uh, but more importantly, we've been, um, Starship itself um, has been around since 1989. So over 30 years um, building various integrations, including directly into QuickBooks. Um, and the QuickBooks relationship really has been around for 20 plus years. Uh, we work directly with the Intuit team uh, through their SDK um, that they built. Um, so everything is in real time with our integration, um, just like you have it today with Shipgear, right? So uh, there is no syncing, there's no importing uh, happening here. Uh, this is a real time connection with QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, we also were recognized earlier this year um, from UPS as a 2022 premier uh, partner. Uh, we were one of five solutions that received that award. We're very excited about that award um, and our relationship with UPS. Uh, we also part of their um, Ready program, um, which uh, allows us to utilize those digital connection funds, formerly known as CTP dollars that many of you may have experienced in the past to help pay for Star uh, Starship as well. So um, again, that partnership continues to remain strong. Uh, and we look forward to uh, future uh, endeavors with them. So just a little bit about some of the main features, the main advantages that when we look at Starship, um, why would you want to use a Starship platform? Um, number one, um, it allows you to bring all of your parcel carriers into one place. Um, and also if you're doing LTL shipping, also any of your LTL platforms, as long as we can support them, um, we can incorporate that into our application. It's really designed to be a one-stop shop, really to help not only generate all your documentation, but also do all of your rate shopping. <coughs> so you don't have to um, go to the various websites um, and get those rates um, and print bill ladings or print labels and then get things manually put back into QuickBooks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and also what we're gonna do is we're gonna leverage line item detail, um, kind of different than what Shipgear offers. Um, where these line items are actually the SKUs coming in from your QuickBooks orders or your invoices. Um, and this is gonna help streamline all your international documentation, which you're gonna see today in the demonstration, um, the bill of lading, if you're doing LTL or if you're a hazmat shipper, allowing us to print all your hazmat documentation as needed as well. So again, that has a very important piece to the application. Some of you might be drop shipping. Um, again, being able to disguise addresses from the, you know, ship from um, information. Again, uh, we can do that for you. Um, we do a lot of drop ship um, type of setups, uh, including third party. Um, if you're doing a lot of third party billing, that's also available in Starship today. Um, some of our customers are consolidating orders into one master shipment. That's also available uh, to you as well if that's something in your workflow. And then one of the main features, a live rate shop, right? Which a lot of users love to see, being able to compare their parcel rates, maybe LTL carriers in one place, making the best decision for that type of shipment. And then lastly, just having an available dashboard, right? That'll provide you various metrics uh, for better negotiations, potentially expansion purposes, but giving you access to your information when you need it versus having to wait around for your you know, various carrier reps to provide that information um, kind of, um, you know, independently of one another, right? Being able to go to one place, see the various information for all your carriers you're shipping with is somewhat advantageous as well. So what we look at when we do a QuickBooks integration, right? We're updating, not only tracking information, the shipped on date, ship via method that was used in case if you did a rate shop and change the carrier during the rate shop, we're gonna write that back into QuickBooks for you. How many packages, 
Um, and there's a lot more. We have a whole list of information we could put back in QuickBooks if you want. You can keep it very simple with maybe just a tracking number and freight cost um, if that's all you're looking for. Again, as I mentioned, it's real time. Um, and then also we, um, a few years back, we kind of created a custom field in your QuickBooks environment called Starship Ship Status, in which we can update that with the word processed. That just allows us to remove that order from our queue. Um, so the shipper themselves don't go back and try to duplicate that order, but it's also check and balance if someone were to come back in QuickBooks and see if the order's actually been processed already um, with the available information from Starship. Why are we looking uh, to maybe move to the cloud, right? Starship is running up in our cloud environment. It is a multi-tenant application, meaning that the server itself is no longer housed um, either in your local environment or in a hosting provider's environment. Um, this is running in our Microsoft Azure environment. Um, you will log into a browser um, to access the application that's dedicated to your company. Um, it's always running on the latest, or latest version of Starship, so you never have to worry about running manual upgrades like you do today um, with your various applications. Um, you have access to unlimited users and carriers uh, potentially here. Um, you can manage seasonality. A lot of you might be seasonal shippers, changing your plan as needed. Um, and then also restricting access to various users. So again, uh, making maybe a shipper not have an uh, ability to change your plan, for instance, or maybe someone in the customer service department only having access to rate quoting or report generation, not being able to ship, things like that where you can restrict access to various users. And then obviously not having to worry about upgrades is gonna reduce your IT expenses, right? So you don't have to worry about, I gotta upgrade world ship, ship manager, ship gear, right? All of those go away. Um, Starship just does it overnight, right? You come in, log in, and don't even realize something has happened. So uh, again, not having to worry about those on an annual basis is gonna you know, provide dividends in the long run. This is just an updated list of carriers. Um, uh, as many of you may know, um, YRC was recently in the news um, who just went out of business, unfortunately. Um, so we kind of removed them from the list of carriers here, um, along with a few of their uh, subsidiaries that they were working with as well. Uh, but this is our new list uh, of carriers that we have available to all of you um, from a freight and parcel perspective. Now, some of you may look at it and say there's maybe some LTL carriers that are not on here or maybe some parcel carriers. Um, we can work with you regardless. Um, Jason or Alicia, who's on the call with me, um, when they follow up with you, we can get kind of your full list of carriers and we can explain various ways that we can potentially support you in Starship in case if we don't work with them in the direct capacity. Um, so more to come on that as well. And then really, as I mentioned earlier, you know, what are we waiting for, right? So um, again, we are now down to essentially about four months remaining before uh, ship gear is no longer supported in, in our um, uh, by our team, right? Um, again, we are not doing bug fixes, enhancements to the product any longer. It is sort of on its last leg, unfortunately. Um, we still have about 600 customers running ship gear today um, that need to migrate, right? Or find something maybe alternative to what they're using with ship gear. Um, and then right now, because of uh, all of the projects coming in from ship gear users along with other projects we have going out with new customers, um, we are experiencing about a 10 week backlog. Um, so right now we are currently booking into late October, early November. Um, so if you were to make a decision here um, in the next few weeks, that's sort of when we would be timing this all out for Starship to get uh, up and running uh, potentially for you. Um, again, and then also some customers may ask to be expedited. Um, right now there's limited capacity in the schedule. Uh, there might be a few spots open, uh, but because of that, there is um, uh, potential fees for expedited requests um, that would be tacked on to any implement implementation fees as well. So just keep that in mind as you plan out. Uh, but we are asking everybody to kind of, you know, take action sooner than later, because by the time the end of the year comes, we probably will be backlogged about three to four months. Um, and we will be way into 2024 at that point. So uh, we definitely don't want to have that happen to all of you. Um, so if you can get onto our platform sooner than later, then by all means, please do. Um, and then also you're paying higher fees, right, for limited integration currently um, with our price increase last October. 
right, with no additional enhancements. Some of you may pay end up paying less for Starship than others, um, depending on the plan you're currently running with ship gear versus what Starship may run. Um, but again, definitely something you want to inquire about and seeing what that pricing looks like for all of you. Okay, let me uh, jump out of here. Let me just take you through a quick demonstration of our solution. Um, so again, as I mentioned, um, Starship being a cloud-based application, so I'll kind of have you direct your attention to the browser here, and you'll see I have a kind of a URL that's dedicated. This is what you'll bookmark and log into. When you log into Starship um, every day, um, you essentially have a queue of orders that are basically, and I have this filtered on that custom field I mentioned a moment ago, uh, where I'm looking at um, the filter that says, hey, as long as that field is not filled in, I need to display all my orders that have not yet processed. Um, and that's all of these here. You also, just like ShipGear, have like an import key function, meaning that I can type in or I can scan in an order or an invoice number into this field like you all do today with ShipGear and, have, and hit enter and that will pull into Starship as well. Um, also keep note that we process sales orders, sales receipts, or sales invoices. Workflow is exactly the same no difference in either one of those document types. So again, I'm gonna to focus today around international, right? Just kind of show you something a little different and how we produce your international documentation. But if you don't wanna enter a code or type in or scan in anything in here, you can use any one of these little truck icons off to the right of the screen. And if I click on that little truck icon, it's gonna essentially pull in the order to Starship. Now, one thing that we're gonna probably ask the question today or maybe later, is do we use WorldShip or Ship Manager to process our documents? The answer to that question is no, right? This is not a middleware solution like ShipGear. This is a full-blown shipping solution, meaning that we are gonna load your UPS accounts, your FedEx accounts, your LTL accounts into the application so you can see your rates. Um, everything else is the same, right? Pickups, billing, all come from the carriers. We're just providing you one place to see everything in front of you. So again, everything here is on one screen. Um, the send from is going to be set up as you. Um, again, this is where we can set up different dropship IDs so we can default those coming in automatically or have you check those manually in here. Um, recipient is pulling in that ship to information from QuickBooks automatic. So again, we have our ship from uh, information. We have our recipient information, which all comes in from QuickBooks. And one thing to point out here is you're going to see recipient is sort of in red. If you sort of hover over this here, it's gonna tell you what's missing. And it's telling me it's, you know, hey, my contact name is not listed. Um, you can map in that information, but if that ever happens, you can always drill into any one of these and you can quickly type in the information into here. Um, and now you'll see that red has gone away and I'm good to go. Um, same thing with my um, information here. This says, you know, this will tell me what exactly is going on. It's telling me no services are available currently. There could be something going on with the API with UPS um, that's providing that to me. We'll kind of correct that in a minute, hopefully, and we'll see what's going on. But again, this is all your transportation information um, defaulting to your prepaid account with UPS. You also have the ability of setting up various third parties. Um, so again, we can map in third party accounts. You can build a list of all your third party IDs in here as well um, with just basic information, um, address information, things like that. Um, so we can help you set all of that up as well as needed. Um, in the international tab here, or actually at the bottom, you have all your duties and tax, um, our charges, right? All of that will be basically pre-populated depending on what carrier you're using. Um, any broker information, import or record information can also be saved ahead of time, or you can type that in manually as well. Um, so again, you have a lot of information in here um, to go by. Um, the international tab just essentially allows you um, to basically, this, this, there we go. okay, um, so I can type in anything in here. I can also, um, you know, map this information in for other charges description, but the goods value is pulling in the values from QuickBooks. Um, so again, will all your line items reflect, will reflect into this goods value along with your freight charges, combining a total commercial invoice total of $663. So again, you have that available to you. And then any shippers you know, needing an uh, ITN number or filing with ACE, we also have a direct integration with them 
where we can transfer the information over to that portal for you to generate your ITN number that will be needed uh, for those types of shipments as well. Okay. Um, and then down here is just the packaging element. Um, so again, you can package up your goods however you like, um, bring everything into one box, do what I've done and create packing scenarios in which I can default specific items in different boxes. Um, just like World Ship or Ship Manager today, we have our own packaging database that we can set up ahead of time so you can easily pick whichever box size you want to use. And that will default over here with its pre-populated dimensions and weight as well. Um, so again, just you know, kind of keep that in mind. And then if you want to use a scale, you can connect up to a scale and the box can read in those um, actual weights of uh, those boxes as needed. Um, and then over here, big thing with international or LTL or even hazmat um, is making sure that we have the appropriate information under the individual SKU. So things like you know um, HTS codes or group or NMFC codes for LTL, um, anything that might be missing for a particular shipment, it will error out until you need to enter it the first time. Um, or we can do a mass upload of information. Uh, but again, here you can see the international. I already have all my HTS information pre-populated. My certificate of origin is already done. Everything needed to print automatically with my shipping label is available. Also keep note that for international, we do support UPS paperless invoicing as well as FedEx electronic trade documents in case you want to do these electronically um, as well. And then last but not least is the rate shop, right? So you can click this button here. You can also set up a rule to have this automatically pre um, fill in for you and choose your least expensive option. Um, but here, once I click this, it's calling out to each of the APIs that I have set up um, and pulling in my negotiated rates. Um, so I can see, okay, is this cheaper to go parcel, cheaper to go LTL? Um, what option do you want to look at? Um, but again, this will show you now in this case here, here comes my UPS ground in Canada rates, right? And you can see my rate here is set up essentially the cheapest option, 138, and I'm sorting on my contracted rates, right? So 138 is my cheapest option, but if I wanna look down below, I can see various other options with LTL carriers as well. So if you did wanna switch the mode, you can just change it over to say RNL, for instance, or Old Dominion, right? You can make that change very easily by selecting the box here as well. Okay. And then one other thing is we do return transit times. So if that's important in your decision, you can look at that as well as needed. All right, so now I can go ahead, I can process this order. Um, and then once I process the order, the write back, all your labels, any commercial invoices, all of that information will populate and print at your printers. Um, and then the write back to QuickBooks is gonna happen automatically for me as well. So as I'm in here, so I can go back into QuickBooks and show you what that write back looks like. This populates here. Cool. All right. So now if I go back to QuickBooks, you're going to see here's my sales order. So again, we have our shipped on date, the carrier we used, how many tracking numbers. In that case, I have three boxes, so three individual tracking numbers, what items in each box. Potentially, if you want that written back that way, you can. But you can customize this view however you want. Um, along with any appropriate freight cost, right? We use something called applied rates as well, uh, in which we can generate uh, marked up rates back to QuickBooks uh, based on percentages, flat rates, et cetera. Uh, and again, if that applies in your world, we can definitely speak to you and how we go about setting those up as well. And then there you can see the word process written back into that ship status field as well. Um, just to give you a quick glimpse of the various documents, this would be your standard UPS label in this case that would have printed. We can print a packing list if need be. Um, so this doesn't have to be turned on. You can turn that off if you like. You can print a packing list if you choose to do so. Um, here is your USMCA form in this case. So the commercial invoice or the certificate of origin has printed along with all the appropriate information on there for you to sign. And then last but not least, your commercial invoice as well. Um, would have printed according to this with your um, tracking information, um, all of your commodities, HTS codes, et cetera, and then the total values at the bottom as well. Okay, so you have all of access to that information right from Starship. Again, the biggest thing is setting it up appropriately at the beginning and having this all print seamlessly with your shipping label. 
Um, real quick, high level, I'll show you the dashboard here that you'll get access to as well. Uh, but again, you get things like distribution maps where you can see various shipments across the country um, plotted in real time. So you can kind of get a determination of where your customers are in case if you need to develop new sales and marketing strategies or expansion purposes or better negotiations, you can use that to your advantage. Any one of these charts, you can filter out whatever you like, right? So different date ranges, carriers, you know, whatever you're looking for, you can add as many filters. Um, along with all of these other charts. So things like package volume, LTL volume, costs. Again, you can add and change things very quickly to see various trends in the business. Um, and then if you need to dive in deeper, you do have a whole report database here as well, in which you can look at things like address corrections, late deliveries, um, charges comparison. So what was being quoted versus what was being collected from the customer. Um, so you have a lot of information in here. Um, right at your fingertips to run weekly, quarterly, yearly, whatever you prefer. Um, so you can take a look through all of those reports as well. And then last but not least, we do have a whole um, notification template database in which you can create your own custom templates as well. Um, so you can kind of send these out in real time. You can send these out, you know, at the end of the day, whatever you choose to do is up to you. Uh, but things like this where you can add logos, be on the lookout for UPS, maybe a PO or a sales order number, um, give them all the tracking numbers associated to the shipment, when to expect delivery by, um, marketing information. So maybe put a coupon code for a future order. Um, so you have a lot of variety here that you can do, uh, a little bit better than Quantum View or you know, FedEx Insight or any of those other programs that are out there. So um, really up to you, how you want to design these and when you want to send them out, uh, but all part of your licensing as well. Uh, but again, appreciate everyone's time, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on Starship soon.